Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the physical properties of transition metals, their variable oxidation states, disproportionation, coloured compounds, transition metals as catalysts, and then finally we're going to summarise. The transition elements are all metals, which is why we often call them the transition metals. They're shiny, with high densities typically, and they also have high melting points and high boiling points. When they're in their solid state, they form giant metal lattices with delocalised electrons. You should have studied this structure before and know that it conducts electricity. So these are all typical properties of the transition metal. Because of things like their high densities and their shininess, they're used a lot in objects you'll see around. For example, the Statue of Liberty contains lots of copper, lampposts tend to contain lots of iron, and 50 pence pieces contain nickel, all of which are transition elements, and all of which have the properties that make these items useful to us. You wouldn't want bendy 50 pence pieces, or a statue of the Lady of Liberty that's likely to melt on a hot day. One of the first key chemical properties of transition metals we're going to look at is the fact that all transition metals have more than one oxidation state. In fact, having many oxidation states is a property that's characteristic of transition metals. All of them form a 2 plus ion, which is often when they lose their 4s electrons. Remember, there are two electrons in the 4s orbital, so losing those will form a 2 plus ion. The 4s electrons are lost first, remember, but because the energy levels of the 3d electrons are so close, the 3d electrons can also be lost to form stable ions for the transition metals. Remember, that's what makes them transition metals, the fact that they can lose some of their 3d electrons and form stable ions. So here's a table that summarises the oxidation states of all of the transition elements that are located in period 4 of the periodic table. This is the first row of transition elements in the periodic table. The colours of some of the common ions that you'll come across in water are also shown. You should already be familiar with some of these colours. For example, manganese 7 plus, which is in potassium permanganate, has a purple colour. Copper 2 plus in solution has a blue colour. Iron 2 plus has a pale green colour. And chromium 6 plus, which is in dichromate, has an orange colour. The rest of them you will come across and meet at some point in the course. The highest oxidation states of the transition metals will readily accept electrons to lower their oxidation states, and this means they are reduced. Because they are easily reduced, this makes them powerful oxidising agents, because they will take those electrons from elsewhere. You should have already encountered the oxidising agents, potassium permanganate, and potassium dichromate. We cover these in our video on redox titrations. Potassium permanganate has the formula KMnO4, and this is a purple solution. We can see the oxidation number of the manganese here by realising that potassium carries a 1 plus charge, so the manganese ion shown here must have a 1 minus charge. Oxygen has an oxidation number of 2 minus per oxygen, so we have 4 lots of 2 minus for the oxygens, which gives us 8 minus. The manganese must counteract some of this 8 minus to give an overall charge, and so oxidation number of the manganate ion, of 1 minus. So the manganese must be 7 plus, which we saw earlier in our table. Similarly, for potassium dichromate, which has the formula K2Cr2O7, we can use logic to work out the oxidation number of the chromium ion here. 
So the potassium, because there's two of them, will provide a two plus charge here, so that dichromate ion, Cr2O7, must provide a charge of two minus. If we then consider the oxygens again, we have seven lots of two minus, which gives us 14 minus. So we need the oxidation of the chromium ions to take this 14 minus to two minus. 12 plus would do this. If we had 12 plus from the chromiums and 14 minus from the oxygens, we would have two minus overall. There are two chromium ions, however, so this is why each one of them has an oxidation number of six plus. Because of their multiple oxidation states, transition metals can undergo disproportionation. Disproportionation is a process where a species is both oxidized and reduced in the same reaction. So it's easiest to see this in an example. If we were to add hot dilute sulfuric acid to copper one oxide, then we form a blue solution of copper two sulfate ions and a brown precipitate of solid copper. The full reaction is shown here, where we have our copper one oxide, because oxygen has a two minus oxidation number, so because this species is not charged, each of the coppers must provide a one plus oxidation number. So we have our copper one plus going to Cu, which has no oxidation number, and copper sulfate, which has an oxidation number of two plus. We can look at just the copper here, because that's what undergoes the disproportionation, and we can see that the two lots of copper 1 plus that should be, not 1 minus, so the two lots of copper 1 plus are oxidised, one of them, to form copper 2 plus, and also reduced to form a copper solid. It's the fact that both of these processes happen within one reaction that makes this disproportionation. This video is getting quite long, guys, so we're going to split it into a couple of parts, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.